Hello and uh, uh, welcome to you at home. My name is Chris van der Zee and I'm a mathematician at the University of Nottingham and I'm going to talk to you in this video about origami and mathematics. And I've got for you in mind two activities and uh, you can enjoy it on your own, you can enjoy it with friends or with your brother and sister or with your parents or if you are a parent uh, watching this, uh, you may get inspired to do an activity later with your own children. Um, we're going to do two activities. They're related to paper folding. As you may know, origami is nothing but folding paper. And for that, you would need a square piece of paper, like this one. It doesn't have to be a single color. It could be uh, a beautifully colored piece of paper like that one um, uh, and uh, you may need several of those um, and in the first part we are in particular going to look at fold a square in half and in the second part we're going to ask a more interesting mathematical question whether a folded square is halved okay um, more about that later so what we are going to focus on is the area of a piece of paper, okay, the surface area of a piece of paper. So here I've got a square piece of paper and uh, it has a particular area. So I've got a whiteboard with me as mathematicians are used to writing on whiteboards with a pen and I want to uh, uh, you know, explain in simple words again what is an area. So if I've got a square piece of paper, the area is nothing but mm, essentially counting the number of unit blocks or squares inside this square, inside this bigger square. So suppose that I split up this square into four pieces or actually if I split up the square into 16 little squares like that uh, then you can calculate the area of the big square essentially by counting the number of squares on that side times the number of squares on that side so essentially you would get 4 times 4 equals 16. So that is the area of the square. So, you know, S, the area of the square, equals 4 times 4 equals 16. All right. Um, now, maybe one of those squares has length 1 centimeter on the side and 1 centimeter on the other side. In that case, we would have essentially we would have four centimeters here four centimeters there and we would say we've got a 16 squared centimeter area piece of paper okay i don't really mind the units here uh, we're just going to be think about uh, a particular shape having a particular surface area and we may as well just think of our little square as having a surface area of 16 if you want now I've already prepared a piece of paper that has exactly 16 of those little blocks. Okay, now here's the first activity and I'm going to explain that to you now what I want you to think about. And the activity is as follows. When you fold a, a square piece of paper, you make a fold maybe like that. You make a fold like that. Or if you don't like that fold, maybe you like this fold. Maybe you like that fold better. Or, well, in any case, what I want to ask is, how do you fold a square in half? What do I mean with that? If I fold a square, maybe with a fold like that, I'm going to see, I'm going to see a shape that is not a square. I'm going to see a shape like this. And I wonder what is the area of what I see. So what is the area of this 
yeah, what is the area of that? Okay. And can I fold this square in half so that the remaining shape that I see has exactly half of the area as the original square? Hmm. Well, you might think, wow, that sounds very easy. Mm, actually, let me take this little piece of paper with the little blocks drawn onto it. Why don't you just simply fold it like half, like this? So I'm going to fold it exactly like that. If I do that, you can see I've get, I'm getting a rectangular shape. And what is the, what is the area of this shape? Oh, we can count the blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. And the original square had 16. So we have now, we have now folded, we have now folded our square in half. Okay. The activity for you is to think about what other folds can I do? Starting from the square, what other folds can I do to fold the square in half? That's the activity for you. So take a piece of paper, take a piece of paper, and try to do some folds. You can do you can do multiple folds. You don't have to do one. You can do you can do that, and maybe you want to do that. Okay, you can do multiple folds, and uh, the the goal is that if uh, if you're finished with your folds. Uh, what you get should have an what you get should have an area that was half of the original. Hmm. What folds would you do? What folds would you come up with? So you could pause the video now and try it out, or you could simply just uh, continue watching uh, the things that I will come up with. Um, so. You know, if you start up from this one, it, it, you know, you, you may think, well, if I do it like that, I get half. It's not an interesting fold. Maybe um, I'll try a different fold. What fold would I try? Well, how about if I fold exactly on a line like that? Definitely, we're not, we're not near half yet. But what if I do it again on the other side? like that you see i did two folds now i did two folds and the end result is exactly again eight little squares so here you've got a way of folding a square in half using two folds okay so uh, i also did it already with a, a nicer looking piece of paper my wife got those for me they are very nice pictures of the universe they're slightly different pictures on both sides but yeah, if you fold it like that, uh, you get half the, half the square. And this is also known as a cabinet fold for maybe obvious reasons to you. It looks like a cabinet, perhaps. Okay, so what other folds can you do starting from a square? So let me see if, uh, if you you found some other folds. So let's start from this one and let's fold diagonally. Did you think of that one? Did you think of that one? That is an interesting one. If you fold diagonally, hmm, you get a triangle fold. Or as some people say it's a nappy fold. A nappy fold. I'm not sure why it's called a nappy fold. I don't know. It's called a nappy fold. Okay, and, and does that have half? of the square well let's look at our 16 times 16 grid let me do it here quickly like that how many squares do you count one two three four five six and then we've got a number of half squares two halves three halves four halves so six plus four halves is eight, so that's again half of sixteen. What we started off with. So, if you if you thought of that 
fold diagonally. Well done. Uh, maybe you thought of even something more complicated. Maybe you thought of one of the most beautiful folds to get half, which is starting from that and folding to the center, each of the corners, each of the corners to the center. This is known as the square fold. And you get a little square. You started off with a large square, you get a little square, and that's exactly half of what you started off with. How do you know? Well, we could, we could just try it here. You know, do it with this little thing and, and count the little squares. You see we've got a lot of half ones, but okay, you can try that. <clears throat> now, now as for some really interesting folds. Let's try to half the square with three folds. Okay, now here's an interesting one. So start with a, with a, with a cabinet fold, but only one. Okay, uh, essentially what you do by doing that is you're getting rid of four of the little squares, right? So um, now we've got, we're left with that. And now let's do the, the square fold by putting this into the center, putting that into the center. Then you've got this little polygon is a nicely looking polygon, which is known as a house roof fold, for obvious reasons perhaps. And uh, the area is halved. Why is the area halved? Well, this little cabinet fold made sure that the bottom half was halved, and these two roof folds made sure that the top half was halved. So if you, you know, you half that part and you half that part, the result is again half of what you started off with. Wow. Very, very interesting. Now, now for one of the most elegant ones. Look at that. Look at that. This is known as the parallelogram. If you figured out this one, congratulations to you. This is a really interesting fold. Let me show you where it got, where we got it from. So as I unfold it, you get your square again. So how did I get to this parallelogram shape? That is exactly half of what I started off with. Okay, so here's what you need to do. Uh, you basically, if you first do a rectangular fold all over and then you unfold it, uh, you basically get the midpoints on the sides. And then what you do is you take the midpoint there and you, you, you take that corner point and you, draw, and you fold along that line. You fold along that line. Okay, you see that? You fold along that line. And by doing that, you see that the top rectangle actually gets halved because well, if you're just looking at the top rectangle, you get you get like a a triangle. If you just see the top part, you get a triangle that has half the area of what you started off with. Now, if you do that at the bottom as well, then the bottom triangle. I don't know if that, that makes sense, but that bottom triangle is also half what you started off with. So again, you do two halves and you make sure that both halves are folded in half. And then the end result is a beautiful shape that has exactly half of the square that you started off with. Okay, I'm curious to know if you were able to figure out other folds that, you know, half the square and um, maybe you started off with a little square and maybe you tried to do uh, something like this then you get an interesting shape it's a little smart it's almost like a crown 
And maybe you thought about this shape. Maybe you thought about this shape and you thought, is this folded square halved? So that's our second question that we are actually run into now. So now we're thinking about this maybe more mathematically. If I fold this shape, if I fold this, and I get a shape like that, is this, is this shape that we see, is that half of what I started off with? Um, And that is not a very easy question, maybe. But we're going to look at that in detail now. So here's, a one, here's another one in blue. Uh, what is your guess? If I, if I have this shape, I folded it with one fold, with one fold, I get this one. Do you think this area you see, do you think it is half of what we had before? Or do you think it's less than a half? Or do you think it's more than a half? Maybe you've got a good guess. Maybe you're quite uncertain. But one thing that mathematicians do is try to remove uncertainty and try to uh, use certain properties to uh, obtain a result. Uh, and uh, maybe we use algebra for that. Algebra is nothing but you know, using letters instead of numbers. Essentially. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to show you how algebra can help us with the question is a folded square halved? Is it halved always? Okay, so back to my whiteboard. I'm gonna get rid of this. So suppose that where's my little grid? Oh, I seem to have lost it. Oh, there it is. Suppose that I fold this one like that. It's not, it's not a half fold, but suppose that I do that. Okay. Then let's look at what happens in that case. I'm going to try and draw that. It's going to look like this. Sort of, right? This is what I mean. It's going to look like that. So you see that uh, you've got a f an area that consists of a piece of paper that is sitting at the front and you've got a, a top part, that part, uh, which is a piece of paper that is actually from the, the back of the paper. Because if you make a fold, you've got a piece of paper at the front and you've got a piece of paper at the back. Okay. Now, let's do some algebra. The surface area of the square, so the square area, this must always equal uh, whatever you have at the front plus whatever you have at the back if you've got a single fold. So what I mean with that is this area plus that area, uh, they must add together to the entire square. So the square is the front plus the back area. Okay, that's the algebra we've got. Now what is the area of the shape that we see after we fold it? What is the area? Now let me call that A, the area this is nothing but what you see at the front, the front, plus, well, not everything from the back. We only see the top bit of the back. So let me call that the extra bit. So the area is F plus the extra bit. So we just used algebra to write down formulas for the square area and the area of the folded piece of paper. And in this case, you know, we can simply put numbers to it because uh, we, we can see that the front, the front has four. So the front simply has four 
and the extra bit which is the bit at the top if I turn it around which is only the top eight squares right that extra bit so that's eight so that means that the area of the shape you see after you folded it is 12 so 12 is 4 plus 8 all right um, that formula is obviously true it's the front which is 4 plus the back the entire back is 12 so 4 plus 12 is 16 and we know that that's true okay now these formulas that I just wrote down they are true for any fold that I make any single fold so it's also true for this particular shape right you've got a front part you've got a back part together they must add up to the entire square the area you see from the shape has a front part and an, and the extra bits the extra bits that you can see from the back so here's one bit and here's another bit and I've got a little piece of paper to illustrate that slightly better here's a piece of paper that has two colors okay so if I fold it like this you can clearly see now uh, the shape you see has a front bit and the extra bits in blue and that together forms the area all right now the major question is the area you see a is that half of the square mm. let's try let's try to approach that mathematically so what mathematicians sometimes do is uh, they just look at all possibilities that may present itself when you do a fold okay um, so let me remove this shape and let's just try to draw the shape that we have which is this one let me try to draw that shape actually let me just do it like this i'm going to try and do it like this i'm going to keep I'm going to keep it like that and I'm just going to outline it like that. Whoop. Whoop. This is an interesting polygon. How many sides does this polygon have? Shoop. And like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sides. This is a nine sided polygon. And um, if we now uh, try to draw the front from this shape, maybe I'll use a different color, this one, try to draw the front. We see that it's actually here. It's, it's this part. This part is the front of the shape. And... Um, the extra bits, the, the blue bits here, the blue bits, the extra bits, they are here. That's the extra bits. Like that. Hmm. Okay. Now, as I was trying to say, so for this general fold, mathematicians like to maybe think of all the possibilities that present itself. So it could be that case one it could be that the front area the front area is larger than one half times the square area okay it could also be number two that the front area equals one half times the square area and the third possibility is that the front area is less than one half times the square area. Those are three possibilities uh, that may happen. And let's consider all three. Okay, so first case. So if the front area is larger than one half times the square, right, if the front is larger than one half times the square, uh, then what is the total area of what we see? Well, the total area, this is F plus E. So this is the front 
plus the extra bits. But since the front is larger than one half times s, front is larger than one half times s, we can simply add to this inequality on number one, we can simply add e on the left and e on the right. So if I add e on the left, I get f plus e larger than a half times s plus e. f plus e is larger, let me do it here, larger than one half times s plus e. Like that. And that means that the area is larger than one half s plus e. But the extra bits are going to be uh, non-zero, we usually say. So they're going to be something. So that means the extra bits are going to be something. So e is larger than zero. It's, it's something. So if e is larger than zero, that means that this final result, one half times s plus e, this is larger again than one half times s because e is larger than zero. So basically I'm adding here one half s on the left and one half s on the right. So when you look at this entire chain that we have created, a is larger than something which is larger than one half times s. In other words, a is larger than one half times the square. And there's, and there's your first result if the fold, uh, not, if the fold is such that the front is larger than one half times s, because there's extra bits, the area is going to be larger than one half times s. So it's not half. Maybe that seems very straightforward to you. Because isn't it silly to look at the case that the front is larger than one half times s? Then of course the area is going to be larger than one half times s. Yes, this is a little bit silly to look at that in details. But the nice thing about mathematics is that you can, sh you can show it with algebra uh, that it is indeed, the area is indeed larger than one half times s. And you can kind of disconnect from, uh, from maybe uh, uh, what these equations relate to. That's the Once you've written down the equations, you can study them on their, on their own without knowing where they came from and infer that the area was larger than one half times s. Okay, let's go into the number two and number three case. Okay, number two and number three case. So in the second case, number two, I've assumed that I've made a very special fold. So I've, I've assumed that I made a very special fold exactly such that the front is exactly half times the square. So number two. Okay. Is this shape is this half times the square? Hmm. That sounds like a silly question again. Well, let's see what the mathematics tells us. Um, let's look into that first equation. The square equals the front plus the back. We know that that's true. So if the square equals the front plus the back, and the front equals one half times s, what do we get? The square equals one half times s plus the back. I just used this result in there. And if the square equals a half times s plus back, then from that we we find that the back must be one half times s. That's almost a trivial statement. If the front area is half times the square, and then the back area must be half times the square. Come on, we cannot lose. We cannot lose. The back must be a half. If the front is a half, we cannot lose area. Okay, well, glad we we learned that from the algebra. But knowing now that the back is uh, one half times the square, uh, uh, let's go back to uh, the second equation where we are wondering about what is a. Well, a is 
f plus e. But if f is one half times s, one half times s, and we add a bit of extra bit, well, the extra bit is always larger than zero. So if I add one half times s to an extra bit, we will always be larger than one half times s. In other words, we have exactly the same result as we had for the first situation. The area is larger than one half times the square root. Okay, so again, we have a result that seems uh, so natural that we wonder why we did the mathematics for that. So if the area is exactly one half times the square and I have extra bits, of course then the total if the front, sorry, if the front is one half times the square, of course the total area is going to be larger than one half times the square. Okay, so here's the most interesting bit then. It's number three. So what happens, what happens if the front area is less than one half times s? So which is kind of a situation like, like this one. Do you see the front is, is looking maybe less than one half times the area? Okay. So in that case, let's go to the first equation. Okay. So we've got that s equals the front plus the back, and we know that the front is less than one half plus s. So if we add the back on the left side, we have to add it on the right side, so we get this inequality, one half times s plus the back. So it says that the, 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 the square area is less than a half of the square plus the back. So if s is less than a half s plus back, then the back must be, from that we learn that the backward area must be larger than one half s, right? So if this is true, we learn from that that the back, backwards part must be larger than one half s. So what I mean with that is if, if you start off with this shape and the front area happens to be less than a half of the square, then it must be true from this what we just showed that the back side must be larger than one half times s. So and in that case, right, in that case, if the back side is larger than one half times s, actually, by, by flipping this around and making the back the front, it, of course, the, the shape is, the shape has the same area, no matter if you look at it from the front or the back. So, but if you look at it now, with the back in front and knowing the back is larger than one half times s, we end up in the first case, but looking at from the back. And we already knew that in that case, if that happens, that the area of the folded square is larger than one half again. So from this, by me, by mirroring or by flipping by, by flipping or I should say by flipping flipping the shape then flipping the shape we obtain that a is also larger than one half times s because we already did that that was case one so What's the conclusion? Let me go, like, let me throw this away. So you start off with a square, and you fold it with a single fold. The shape you get has an area that is larger than half of what you started off with, if you see extra bits, like in here. If you don't see extra bits, maybe like that, ha, ah, we know that we get a half, there's another one, we know that we get a half as well, like that, we get our, we get our favorite fold of the day, the nappy fold. So I hope you enjoyed that little bit of mathematics and uh, maybe you, you kind of guessed it correctly that this shape always has 
a larger than a half area. Uh, maybe you did not guess it correctly, but you're convinced now. In any case, I hope you had a good fun time. And thank you for watching.